Uh, a good afternoon, one and all. Sorry, Angela Bishop's just having a photo session. <laughs> good afternoon, one and all. Firstly, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners, of course, the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. We respect their elders, past, present, and emerging, and acknowledge that they are the traditional owners of this magnificent land on which we stand. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare to hit a long 
hot Australian summer, we're reminded of the fact that at this time of the year, and every other time of the year, but especially over summer and backyards on road trips, on Spotify and Apple Music uh, charts, uh, Cold Chisel, Flame Trees, k -San, the rest of the catalogue is blazing away. There's nothing more like an Australian summer than Cold Chisel, having Cold Chisel blasting out of your backyard barbie. Um, and uh, it's not out of the barbie itself, but out of the speakers, you know what I mean. Um, and we're reminded that uh, Cold Chisel have actually never, ever done a big outdoor summer tour, and it's high time. That is, until now. There is nothing more Australian than hot sun, warm waves, and Cold Chisel. Yeah! Their classic songs have become the soundtrack to our summers. So, for the first time in nearly 40 years, Cold Chisel are hitting the road for the summer holidays from New Year's Eve until the kids are back at school. Since their legendary last stand in 1983, they've reformed for just four national tours, but none of them happened over the summer break, and nearly all those gigs happened indoors. Now, Australia's most legendary band is coming to iconic outdoor locations at our favourite time of year. There'll be gigs at the beach, gigs by the river, gigs in the bush. They've never done a tour like this before. Cold Chisel on, on, on a good night is probably one of the best rock and roll bands in the world. Since forming in Adelaide in 1973 and blasting onto the national scene in the late 70s, Cold Chisel has created a uniquely Australian fusion of rockabilly, roughhouse soul and blues. Over the decades, they have defied the odds, ignored the trends and blazed their own trail. The band has endeared themselves to all sorts of Australians. Their uncompromising attitude embodies our hopes, fears, alienation and humour. Chisel are simply one of the wildest live rock and roll outfits on earth. It's all about Australia, and the words include, you know, a place like Parramatta Jail and Four Walls. You know, you can sort of feel Australia through their song. From the beginning, the punters have been with them all the way. Best band in the world. Now comes Cold Chisel's Blood Moon Tour. A blood moon is a rare lunar eclipse where the sun, earth and moon all briefly align before continuing on their own orbits. If you're lucky, you might get to see a blood moon once in your life. Between New Year's Eve and the second weekend of February, Cold Chisel will stage a series of shows with locations and lineups as rare and memorable as a blood moon. Featuring Paul Kelly, Hoodoo Gurus, Birds of Tokyo, Casey Chambers, The Mutton Birds, Troy Casadaly, Magic Dirt, The Teskey Brothers, Jebediah, and more. Door locations are all special too. They include Glenelg Beach in the band's old hometown of Adelaide, amongst the vines at the stunning Mount Denis Estate Geelong, the first ever concert at Bankwest Stadium on the Parramatta River, and the biggest lineup to ever hit Tamworth's Country Music Festival, plus a whole lot more. I'm standing in the sun, smoking a cigarette. No plan. Cold Chisel's Blood Moon Tour. You've never seen anything like it before. You'll never see anything like it again. So, to tell you all about what they'll be doing these summer holidays, please welcome Jimmy Barnes, Ian Moss, Phil Small and Don Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, Cold Chisel. You sound like, uh, like one of our crowd. That's very good. Thank you very much. That's quite a welcome, Dolph. <laughs> welcome, boys. It's great to see you. Jim, 
you're not oh, feeling, wait, mate. I'm feeling great. You're not feeling 100. percent I've got a bit of a cold, but I'm sorry. Nothing, not, uh, you know. Why is it taking? Shake off. Why is it taken so long to do a big outdoor summer tour? Um, well, you know, we've done outdoor shows in the past, but we've we've never done uh, a, a complete outdoor summer tour. Let's face it, we broke up in '83, and you know, prior to '83, there wasn't as many outdoor gigs as there is now. Uh, so we've done smatterings of them, but we've never actually gone out and designed a, a show and a, a setting. Uh, specifically for this, so it's going to be big. We know we're going to go out and tear the. I've had a roof would tear it off. <laughs> uh, Dom, um, you've, you've got some mighty special guests on the road, different acts for, for different places, yeah. Yeah, some the um, usually starting a tour like this, we look around and we we see we try and figure out who we can get for cheaper than the tickets they'll sell, <laughs> and. <laughs> And if that doesn't and, work... And, and fortunately, that, that, that's most people. So, <laughs> so we managed to get some great acts, headed by uh, uh, Paul Kelly and the Hoodoo Gurus on various shows. And uh, we've also got uh, Casey Chambers and Troy Casadaly on other shows. And I should also mention uh, Birds, of, Birds of Tokyo... And Tesky Brothers. Tesky Brothers, yes. Yeah, Jebediah. Yeah. So it's a lot of great yeah. bands out there. Yeah. Magic Dirt. Yeah. Mossy, uh, it's great to have you here, mate. Um, Thank you. I don't know if you it's know that. You, anyway. you probably don't. <laughs> Mossy just flew yeah. in this morning on uh, QF12 without his passport, which is a feat that's not uh, recommended. You lost your passport on a flight internally in the States, is that right? Why are we not surprised? <laughs> How the hell did you get here? That's the first time I've, I've ever done that. Honest, honestly, honest. Um, it surprised the hell out of me too. I thought, I thought I'd completely blown this, but uh, I, I don't know what happened there. But uh, thank you, Qantas, who uh, seemed to get that happening for me. So. Now, if they can only get into the rest of the tour gigs. Mate, Molly got <laughs> yeah. turned around for having the wrong visa. You got into the country without a bloody passport. Bloody I mean, good. Driver's no. licence, that's all you need these days. So. Do not, if you lose your passport, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest you have Ian Moss sitting next to you. Uh, who wants to ask a question? We've got Mike's roving, Chris and, and Rena Ange. Over to you, Dom. Don't tell the blonde how to... Oh. I'll never turn it on. Hey, guys... Um, I can't believe you've never sort of done this before because yeah. we sort of imagine you guys have done everything. What uh, about the great outdoors particularly appeals? I think just the fact that, you know, that we can actually design a show, you know, specifically. We, you know, because like I said, we've done outdoor shows, but to design a complete tour for that, for that sort of outdoor production, you know, we want to make it bigger, better, louder, brighter, bloody, you know, faster than anything else that's been out there. So the fact that we can get out and design that from the ground up makes sense to us. Uh, you know, really, we, as, a, as a young band in the 80s and stuff, we, you know, we, we prided ourselves on jumping from big festivals to you know, small clubs, and, you know, and we've done that all through our careers. So it's just, you know, we hadn't really thought about the fact that we hadn't actually done a tour like this, you know. I mean, we're, we're a band that toured relentlessly through all, all the year, but particularly through the summer, and we chased the summer up and down the coast. Uh, so we might as well get out and play outdoors, you know. Um, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah, you're on. Uh, David from the New Zealand Herald. Uh, could you just talk a little bit, please, about the one-off show in Tauranga and the decision to play there? Yeah. Well, you want to talk? It's, a, it's Waitangi Eve, isn't it? The, 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 you know, the, the night before Waitangi, That's, which is a big, big day. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's a big celebration in New Zealand, and we thought it was a perfect day for us to hit there. Don, do you want to talk about, you know, we're playing with the mutton birds and, uh, you know, all sorts of bands over there. Well, um, I've never seen the mutton birds. I'm looking forward to that uh, very much. They're obviously... Um, an iconic, um, uh, uh, iconic New Zealand band. I got to spend an afternoon with Don a few years ago um, out of the Mutton Birds, and I'm looking forward to catching up with him and seeing the band again. I think, you know, I, ju I just finished a tour there myself, and, you know, everywhere I went, people were sort of, you know, prodding me and saying, when's Chisel coming? So I think it's going to be a big thing there. We, you know, we've we had a... You know, we played in, in New Zealand since, you know early 80s when we did, um, um, what's it called, the, the, the Sweetwater Festival, you know, and uh, even uh, seven, late 70s. And, uh, and so we've had a great following there since then, and we just look, look forward to getting there all the time we can. And it's really good that Cold Chisels was getting in there, especially on a big holiday like this. There's also a band on the bill that night, Sit Down in Front, which is a great, 
Good awesome, good <laughs> awesome young band who actually supported me on my tour, and uh, and these guys are like 14, 15, 16. Uh, the singer has cerebral palsy, and and they're a punk band, and they just they they, they played on my show, and, and they said, oh, we really like your songs, and we really like Cold Chisel songs. I said you should come and do the show, and so they've jumped on the tour with us, so which is really great. Are you blokes match fit? <laughs> do you want a race? <laughs> yeah, no, we are match fit. Well, we you know we. Listen, we, we, we tour every five years. So we've got plenty of time to train. Have we been doing practice in the lead up to this gig? Uh, no, we're not yet. We will be. I mean, I've been out on tour. Mossy's been out on tour. Don's been doing shows. Phil's been bloody chasing us trying to catch up with us for the press conference. So, but we are, we are, you know, listen, we don't go into something, any tour these days, without being completely focused and being completely into it. We'll be, we'll be ready to tear the, uh, you know, the place apart by the time we get there. Outstanding. Outstanding. It is outstanding. Good day, guys. Brian from Channel 7. Welcome back. Congratulations on the tour. Looking forward to it. Um, so many great bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s. A few endure, but very few like you. What is it about your music? And Don, you're sitting here. It's great to have you here. All of you here. What is it about your music that... I will, I'm coming down here. I hear it in the taxi. I hear it in a car driving past outside the pavilion now. What, why is Chisel, Chisel so endemic in Australian society? I think a lot of it comes down to uh, just being very focused on, on, on the song and, and trying to write or create a song that's, that's going to be around not just for, for that week or that year, but uh, for you know, the next 50, maybe 100 years. And that's probably you know, something I think uh, I say Don realised that in the early days and he'd sit on a song for months waiting for the, la the right syllable the very last syllable to be fall into right into the right place. You know, there's a lot of bands out there that that, that come out and, and you know and do shows and, and and I know they all take them seriously. But I, you know, I've got to say that playing with Cold Chisel, I, you know, I learned from a very early age. I joined Cold Chisel when I was 16 and a half, and I learned from a very very early age that every single show doesn't matter how many people you're playing to is important. And I think because we attacked every show with the same ferocity as we, you know, as every other show, we, we, you know, people seen that we were making that effort, and people, we connected with people because of that. You know, every show is important, and that's why uh, that's why we're still around to this day. The Blood Moon is a rare occurrence. It is. Um, Well, you know, you've got to think about it. You know, we, we've toured four times, really, together since, you know, since 1983. Uh, you know, well, I, I, I couldn't see us getting around to doing this again. I mean, it's, it's almost an event to do it with this band, but it's also, you know, it's a big beast to get, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a bloody a Mack truck, you know, like, like I said, you know, like about bands, you know, you're hard to get them started. And it takes a lot of preparation, a lot, you know, we don't want to go out and just and rehash our songs, so we like to write new music, so it's not really that likely that we'd be doing this again. I think this is probably, you know, we're looking, we're going to treat this like it's, a, it's, like it's the biggest thing we've ever done and maybe the last. Jimmy, how do you think the fans are going to react to that if it's your last one? Uh, well, Which you know, we'll come along and find out. You know, we, you know, we, you know, we're like we're not going to. We'll treat this like like every other show. Like give it everything we've got and give it, you know, a hundred percent and you know more. Uh, and I think if the fans come, they're going to be pleased. And and I think if they miss it, they'll be really fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working Excuse me. Um, what's the plan for introducing these new songs to, uh, to fans? Good, what do you got there? Uh, I think we're going to release uh, a single of some sort to, put, to promote the whole thing. So, uh, and, we know and there are other, other songs you. in the works as well. We've been working in the studio. So uh, quite happy with what, what we've come up with. I think there'll be an announcement about new music within the next month. You know, definitely there'll be there'll be an album by Christmas. I think. Mm. <clears throat> Phil, Charlie's not here. We assume you'll be standing next to him on the road. Yeah. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie. Look, looking forward to uh, having him come over and uh, join us. We'll be uh, rehearsing, I'd say, mid December, quite full on, and uh, bring everything up to par. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll, uh, it, it will be a hundred and ten percent show. Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to be able to uh, better this uh, tour, uh, being all outdoor shows. Uh, 
I think that's like, like the ultimate that we can expect as, uh, regarding whether there will be anything down the road. I, I can't see us bettering that, but anyway, who, who knows? We'll wait and see. You've obviously put a lot of time and a lot of thought into these gigs. New Year's Eve in Fremantle, which is going to be a great yep. way to kick off the tour. Um, you know, you talked about the Eve of Waitangi Day in New Zealand, which yep. is great. I mean, every gig you've obviously intended to make an event in itself with the, with the you know, in, in Tamworth with the right supports and all that stuff. Yeah, well, obviously, like I said, every show is important, but we, you know, when I say we, I mean our management, you know, really carefully selected these gigs so that, you know, so they would make a big impact, so there'd be a big event. So, you know, like New Year's Eve, you know, in, in Fremantle, it's going to be just, uh, you know, off, off the charts. You know, playing in Adelaide, we're going to be playing on the beach in Glenelg, you know, which is, you know, I, you know, it's the same beach, you know, that, you know, I used to, you know, get chased off of when I was a kid, you know, chased by the police. So uh, it would be great to get back there on, on better conditions. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Sydney, the first, the first time we get to play, um, you know, anybody plays at, at Bank West, which is, I went down there this morning, looks unbelievable. So, uh, you know, we want every one of these shows to be, like, something special. And so every stage in production, the, the song choice, uh, the venue choice, we want that to be, you know, perfect. And that, that's what we're trying to do, putting this together. Tamworth, uh, who have we got in there? We've got um, uh, Troy, C Casey, um, Charlie, Charlie, yeah, Charlie Collins. That's it. It's a you know, it's a big, it's a big, big show, and I think it's on the eve of the of the uh, country music festival. So we're going to put the tree back in country, oh. <laughs> <laughs> or take it out, whatever you want. <laughs> yes, Sunday, nineteen at Jam. <laughs> Paul Kelly, Casey Chambers, yeah. Troy, and Charlie Collins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they're also very fraught beasts in terms of, of weather, sound, and all those things. Are you kind of riding by your city of hats on this one? Nah, we'll, we'll play Rain, Hell, Shine. We're going to nail the stage down uh, <laughs> and, and then blow it apart. Uh, you know, listen, you. you Touch wood, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, listen, it's going to take a, a tornado to stop us playing, uh, and, and we played in them before. So, uh, uh, you know, listen, it's, it is what it is. It's going to be midsummer. If it rains, it'll be warm. We don't give a shit. We're going to play. <laughs> hey, any more questions? Tickets go on sale Monday week, the 21st, ladies and gents. Pre-sale next Wednesday, the 16th. Cold Chisel announced their first ever outdoor summer tour, Blood Moon 2020. Thanks for coming today, everybody. Your support is appreciated.